Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to do is to take a look at uh, watches by a guy named Torsi Lane. Uh, Lane watches are made in Switzerland, but the story starts in Finland where uh, Lane went to watchmaking school, the, the Finnish watchmaking school. And then he went to work for Alanga for a while, and, and he won the uh, Longa Award, the 2014 Watchmaking Excellence Award. And then he went to work for uh, Wootenlanen in Switzerland, and uh, now is uh, he has his uh, watch business in Le Loc, uh in Switzerland. So let's take a look at his watches. The, the first one is the uh, Galidis II. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but that's <laughs> sort of reading it. And I'm going to start with the least expensive and go to the most expensive watches. Most of these watches are all under 10,000 Swiss francs, so they're they're not bad. The first one is 6,900 Swiss francs. Now, the movement is called an LA 18.1, and the base of it is a Unitas ETA 6498-1. Uh, uh, you, it has uh, the nice slow uh, frequency, 18,000 BPH. So this is the kind of frequency that uh, uh, Vooten Lannan seems to like in his watches. And so Lane, having worked with him, probably has some influence by that. Uh, now, he really reworks the uh, 6498. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, uh, doing things with the hairspring, the balance wheel, and so forth. But it's, but that's the base of it. And if you look at the base plate, it's pretty much 6498. But the big thing uh, that he has is the is the engraving and the guilloche, the decoration, and so forth. And you can see there are two examples over there of some of the uh, the work that he's done on it. Uh, now, this is, um, all of the watches have one thing in common. They all have the same types of numbers. Essentially, they're, they're raised brigade numbers. And uh, the way they are, you take them and they're little holes in the, uh, the dial plate and they just poke them in there. And he uses a number of different arrangements of those with a number of different uh, treatments on the on the dial. He's probably best known for that. The Galitis three has a little more decoration, uh, the more options that you have. Is all all of these so far are using the LA eighteen point one. This one has a, you have a choice of a center guilloche or a meteorite. And that's nine thousand Swiss francs for eighty five hundred. They have something. Uh, that he calls moon frosting, uh, just sort of a frosted uh, dial on that. But you can see the guy's got lots of talent for engraving as well as guilloche. Uh, this first one is called the Galitis guilloche, <laughs> or uh, the GG3. And uh, this is the third one. Again, it's got the LA 18.1 movement. And uh, the price is going up. They have uh, three different patterns. One's 8,800, uh, the other's 92, and another's 98. And uh, again, uh, you, have, you have a great deal of elaborate work done on the dial, as well as on the uh, plates and bridges of the movement. This thing doesn't look like a 6498 uh, at all. Uh, but that's the base of it. Now, the final one is called the Lane V38. Now, this one's important. It's got a, um, here's, this is essentially the 6498. This is a Chinese clone of it that I have that I was doing some experiments with resonance. I bought two of them, and I'm going to see if I can create some resonance with them. So this is, this is the base 6498 type of um, movement. And which is my one of my very very favorite movements. Now the other one is the uh, is is by um, Vacher, they call a uh, Vacher manufacturer uh, Fleurier uh, VMF, and this is the it's called the 5401. I have one 
uh, that a guy he 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 was buying. You have to buy at least twenty five uh, sure movements, and he was buying some. So I said, "Hey, could you get one for me too, and I'll pay you for it?" He did, and this is how come I ended up with one. Still trying to figure out what to do with it. Well, um, when the the thing about it is, it's a great movement. It's uh, it's it's an automatic. But when you look at it, you can get a very thin watch out of this because it uses, first of all, it uses a a micro rotor. So the micro rotor doesn't have to go on top and make it thicker. And also it uses a small second. The small second, again, this is so you don't have to have three uh, hands piled on top of each other on the, with center seconds. You can make it thinner by having it uh, at uh, using uh, uh, sub seconds, and this is what uh, and this is what he does uh, with this watch. This one uh, with the moon frosting starts at ninety four hundred dollars, and with uh, triple geo shea it goes up to ten thousand nine hundred. It's also I think the all of the other cases I think are forty one uh, millimeters. This one has a thirty eight millimeter case, and you can see uh, why is that. When you look at the size of the movement, the movement of the 5401 is, uh, allows for that. Anyway, uh, this is a, is a very interesting watchmaker. I would love to see him come out with, with his own movement uh, because I think he's got the talent to do it. But sometimes that can be so expensive, it just isn't worth it. So we'll see what happens. like to hear your comments. A number of people own these watches and seem to like them a lot. Let me know what you think, and this is an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. Until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection.